Thank you, Linda. It's a pleasure to be here. We're going to talk about hot pepper. There are two general categories of spices, the aromatic spices like clove and cinnamon, most distinctive for their aroma and the flavor that they go along with that, and the primarily irritant spices, which are also aromatic, and the four major ones are black pepper, chili pepper, which I will talk about today, ginger, and horseradish. I'm going to talk about one of those, perhaps the most widely consumed spice in the world. There's some dispute about this, if you don't count garlic as a spice. Um, uh, the source of the burn in chili pepper is capsaicin, the source of the burn in ginger is gingerone, the source of the burn in black pepper, pepperine. These are botanically unrelated foods, but they're, they've converged on the same set of receptors in the, uh, in the oral cavity. Um, I, this is an old, most of the work I'm going to tell you about I did in the 1980s. There's a little new work, but pepper is older than my work, so it's okay. It's been around a long time. And two undergraduate students at Penn, Deborah Schiller and Lori Ebert, had a lot to do with this work I'm going to tell you about. So the first thing is, Christopher Columbus arrives in the Americas January 15, 1493. He says in his, in his diary, Toda la gente no come sin ella, que le haya muy sana. They eat nothing without it and deem it very wholesome. This is talking about chili pepper, and he's astonished that anything that tastes that bad would be eaten by all these people readily. Or Bernardo de las Casas, one of the early uh, Spaniards, says, without chili, they do not think they are eating. It's astonishing, if you don't like hot pepper, that this spice is eaten by about at least a third of the people of the world on a daily basis, because it tastes terrible when you first started. That's what got me interested in it. People were doing something that made no sense to me. Okay, just quick chili history. The, there are a number of species of chili pepper, the most common one, capsicum annuum, that accounts for many of the kinds you've eaten. Uh, we know that consumption goes back at least 9,000 years in Mexico. These uh, peppers all grew throughout the tropical New World, not just Mexico. We know that cultivation began 5,000, 7,000 years ago, and it was introduced to Europe after, Col after Columbus and Cortes. This is a remarkable fact. If you look at who eats hot pepper now in the world, it's mostly people who are not in the Americas. It's mostly people in Asia. And it's innately negative. We have all kinds of evidence that little children don't like this taste. The remarkable fact that something that tastes so bad was adopted by billions of people. It's hard to get Americans. It took decades to get them to put a seatbelt on. And that's not very aversive. How could people start with something so terrible tasting and adopt it all over the place? In fact, other foods from the Americas, like potatoes and tomatoes, which are not innately aversive, I ran into quite a bit of opposition. And here's this terrible tasting one. OK, so it starts in the Americas, and it goes initially to Spain through the uh, early uh, explorers. And then subsequently it spreads, particularly to a lot of places, but particularly to West Africa, where it's absolutely core in the cuisine, to South Asia, to Southeast Asia, and South China, and to Indonesia, where it becomes a major part of the food. And that accounts for probably uh, about half of the world, if not more. 